I sort of felt like we covered the explicit intent a little quickly toward the end of class and given its importance in your flipped classroom, I thought I would actually go over it by video just so we can do it in a more relaxed fashion. So the main activity, we're taking a look here. The initialization of main activity is straightforward. We just have this on create log message. This is the rest of the initialization. But then when we do the get on name click, we're creating an intent. And this is our explicit intent to call the ask name activity. Ask name here is a class that extends app compat activity, which is a form of activity. And we are referring to that class right here, the class object. That's what this intent does. As an argument to the intent, we are going to pass it a bundle. And in the bundle, we're putting a string. Calling activity is the key. Main bitch and activity is the value. Here, calling, calling activity, calling activity. It's going to be somewhere. Here it is. Oops. Here is, we call get string calling activity. So if I misspell this, if I, if I do this, I'm not going to get anything. And um, there's not going to be a runtime error or a compile time error. So you do need to be careful. Okay. All right, so I'm putting in my bundle, and again, uh, when I said in class, think of a bundle sort of as like an array list or a map. It's just a container for some data. It's not really Android-y, it's just um, Java-y. It's just, it's just some data. So we're putting a bunch of uh, key value pairs where the key is a string, in this case, the value is a string, and this extra. Then we're putting, sorry, in this bundle, then we're putting the bundle in what's called the extras part of the intent. And the extras part of the intent is just, you know, a, a part of the intent that holds a reference to some data, holds a reference to a bundle. Uh, we, in, um, we are expecting a result. So if we just called start activity, uh, we would start this class and then that would be it. And then if it, if it ended, we would, um, you know, we wouldn't necessarily get called back, but we actually want this activity to pass us a name. And so we want a call back. And so we're doing start activity for result. and you need to set this flag to be one and you give it this intent. So at this point, you're going to start an intent. And when the intent that you start, when the activity, sorry, you're going to, you're, you're going to, uh, execute an intent. I don't exactly know what the terminology is. I think you're going to execute an intent that causes an activity to run. Then when that activity executes, this function is going to get called on activity result. And again, in class, someone asked, you know, why on activity result? Well, this comes from the activity class. So the definition of the uh, activity class deep within Android Studio defines this as the default callback for start activity for result. So I, I haven't looked into it, but my guess is you could potentially, there's a form of this function where you could pass in the name of a function that's different from on activity result and they would call back that function. But by default, the function is going to be named on activity result. So we're overriding it just like, you know, on create is getting, we're overriding it because it's going to get called by the, uh, by the framework. Okay, so we uh, s uh, call start activity for result and ask name. Ask name in the create, you know, we uh, inflate the XML. Then we call get intent to get the activity that called us, the intent. We get the bundle from the intent. We take a look within the bundle to get the data that we were called with. We do some stuff with that data. Then uh, we get some, the, the user's uh, text from this edit text field. 
uh, I find that after suspending, sometimes the uh, emulator takes a lot of CPU, drives up my fan. Maybe it's something else. I tend to look in activity monitor, and see what's going on. Yeah, QMU system. Uh, well, QuickTime Player is doing uh, my recording, so I am using that. All right, well, we'll have to suffer through the the noise. Um, where was I? Yeah, so um, uh, right now I'm going to return. And uh, again, like we said, we're actually passing an empty intent, or, you know, the return intent, and we're putting some data in it. And here we're not being quite so pedantic by defining a new bundle and putting stuff in the bundle and then setting set extras to the bundle, you can actually sort of do that all at once by just taking the intent, doing a put extra, giving it a key and a value. That actually creates the bundle, puts this in the bundle, sets the bundle to the extras field of this intent. Okay. Um, here we're setting the result and we're using result OK, which is uh, you know, defined uh, by Android Studio. There are some other things you can return, like result canceled. Um, uh, I don't know, and other things like result first user, which I've, I've never used, so I don't really know what that is. But we're telling the runtime everything is OK, and here is the intent. The intent doesn't really identify the calling activity in this case, but it does form a repository for data that we're passing back. And then we call finish and we're done. Okay, we don't we don't do a callback or, or do anything with this intent. We just call finish. What we're doing with this intent is setting the result to be that intent. That's when this callback happens on activity result. I'm just gonna hit this so it happens in the background while we're going over this. On activity result, we are going to get the data that was passed to us. Um, on activity result, we actually do have an intent, which is passed as an argument, so we don't have to do this weird sort of get intent call. We actually have the intent, intent for data. So we get the extras, which is a bundle. Okay. <laughs> My emulator is out of date. Huh? You know, it was bound to happen eventually. Um, so, yeah, the thing I want to look at is uh, some life cycle things for the. Um, activities. Okay, so first of all, what do we see here? We see main activity has been created, it's been started, and it's been resumed. Okay, and if we just click this box, it's been paused and it's been stopped. Oh, and then it's been started and resumed. Okay, so, you know, that Pause, stop, start, resume. Okay, now we're going to go get the name. So now, uh, resume. Then main activity was paused. Ask name was created. Ask name was start and resumed. And then main activity was stopped. So why exactly did things happen in this order? I think this is actually just dependent on particular uh, implementations of Android Studio. It's not clear to me that, you know, I think it would also be legal if this on stop happened before the resume. I, I don't even know if maybe the, the on stop did happen before, but the log happened afterwards. I'm not even sure. So I wouldn't get too hung up with the relative orders from different activities but you can still see these state transitions happening in a, a clear way where, you know, it's create, start, resume here. I don't know why I always like to call myself Fred. 
for these things. Like I'm preserving my privacy by not telling this app demo what my real name is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I should I should not snort on these videos. So, um, ask name gets paused, main activity gets resumed, uh, ask name gets stopped. Uh, it, it's now dead, and main activity is resumed. Okay? And uh, hopefully you understand all that, and you will get a chance to demonstrate that understanding in the upcoming flipped classroom activity. Or, <laughs> now I just call everything an activity. Thank you, and thanks for watching.